An acute sore throat is one of the most common presenting complaints, with up to 10% of people contacting their doctor each year with one. It is the term used to describe the symptom of pain in the posterior pharynx, that is, the back of the mouth. Often as a result, people find it difficult to eat and drink, which plays a major role in the management. Other symptoms that are commonly found alongside a sore throat include fever, malaise, headache, fatigue, and odinophagia, meaning pain on swallowing, which I remember by Odin being the name of a god of war. This is often present but not always, and the pain may radiate to the ears. In uncommon cases, a sore throat can be complicated and lead to an absolute inability to swallow, either due to pain or even due to physical obstruction. This is called absolute aphasia, which can manifest with drooling or spitting out of saliva. Another is trismus, which is limitation in opening the mouth that can suggest an abscess, and voice hoarseness or hot potato voice, meaning talking as if a hot object was in the mouth, which can be an indication of other severe diseases that we'll touch on when looking at the causes. You'll find free practice material on sore throat and other subjects available through Wisdolia, including multiple choice questions, flashcards and case scenarios that give feedback as you answer. Find a link to the sore throat set below. Most cases of an acute sore throat are due to infection, with tonsillopharyngitis or acute pharyngitis being the most common, which is predominantly caused by common cold viruses like rhinovirus and adenovirus, but can be due to others too, like herpes simplex and HIV. Around 30% of cases are caused by bacteria, the most common being group A beta hemolytic streptococcus, like streptococcus pyogenes which is why these are sometimes called strep throat. This is more common in those between 5 and 15 years of age, is rare before 3 years, and is less common in older adults. The reason this distinction is important is because of the possible complications of group A strep pharyngitis. In particular, rheumatic fever that typically develops 2-4 to four weeks post-infection, due to molecular mimicry where antibodies directed against the bacteria also cross-react and damage the body, the most serious manifestation of which is rheumatic heart disease where heart valves are damaged. To help distinguish viral and bacterial causes clinically, scoring systems like the Centaur score are used, where for each of the following the likelihood of bacterial infection goes up. Fever, tonsillar exudate, absence of cough, and tender anterior cervical lymphadenopathy. One or less indicates a low probability, two should be tested via rapid antigen testing and throat culture, although some places will do these tests regardless of the score, and three or four would be warranting of being treated empirically with antibiotics, typically phenoxymethylpenicillin or clarithromycin if allergic. However, depending on location, microbiological confirmation may be sought before antibiotics are given. Treatment of tonsillopharyngitis is mostly supportive, with 40% resolving in 3 days and 85% within 1 week, regardless of a viral or streptococcal infection. This includes analgesia such as paracetamol and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen, and topical analgesia like sprays or lozenges are also options. We mentioned how sore throat can impair oral intake, so encouraging hydration is key. The value of corticosteroids is debated, and most guidelines do not include them, and repeated episodes of strep throat may require a tonsillectomy. Infectious mononucleosis, or mono, also known as glandular fever and kissing disease, is also a cause of sore throat, caused by the Epstein-Barr virus. 50% of children before the age of 5 will be affected, and 90% of adults are seropositive. This often features general lymphadenopathy, including the posterior cervical chain, fatigue and malaise for over a week, and sometimes hepatosplenomegaly 
and jaundice. This is tested by heterophile antibody testing called a monospot or specific Epstein-Barr virus antibody testing. And due to the presentation being similar to that of primary HIV, those with HIV risk factors should be tested for HIV. Treatment is typically supportive as the disease is mostly self-limiting with advice to avoid contact sports for approximately three to four weeks due to the risk of splenic rupture. Next are abscesses, which are collections of pus built up within a tissue. And peritonsillar abscesses, also known as quincy, can also cause sore throat. These form between the tonsils and pharyngeal wall in a potential space called the peritonsillar space. Typically, these cause a more severe pain than in tonsillopharyngitis and are usually unilateral. But bear in mind, these can be a complication of tonsillopharyngitis in around 2% of people within two months of infection. These often present with trismus, voice changes, fever and drooling, and on examination will have a bulge with deviation of the soft palate and often uvula. The Liverpool peritonsillar abscess score gives an idea of the likelihood of a sore throat being a peritonsillar abscess. It includes three points for a unilateral sore throat, with a patient describing at least an 80-20 predominance on one side, two points for trismus of less than 3 cm, then one point each for male sex and hot potato voice. Total scores of 0 to 3 have a 98% negative predictive value, while those of 4 to 5 or 6 or above have a 60 and 80% respectively positive predictive value. A parapharyngeal abscess is an abscess in the parapharyngeal space that has an anterior and posterior compartment, the latter housing the carotid artery and internal jugular vein. In addition to other symptoms found with sore throat, these will often feature swelling in the neck down to the hyoid bone, and compression of the upper airway and gastrointestinal tract as it progresses. A retropharyngeal abscess is when an abscess develops in the retropharyngeal lymph nodes, which is why these are seen mostly in children from ages 1 to 8, as these begin to recede by around 4 or 5 years. They can occur in adults who have ingested foreign bodies or have had exposure to instrumentation. Again, these can compress the airway and GI tract, giving symptoms like stridor and dysphagia and can also cause neck stiffness alongside the sore throat. The diagnosis often involves imaging, with peritonsillar abscesses mostly being clinically diagnosed and confirmed by aspirating pus, while the other two usually have CT scans, and lateral x-ray may also be done in retropharyngeal abscesses. Treatment is usually with aspiration or incision and drainage, often alongside antibiotics. Intravenous fluids are commonly given as most of these patients will be dehydrated, as well as analgesia, and some smaller abscesses may only need intravenous antibiotics. Epiglottitis and supraglottitis are another cause of sore throat, that are a rapidly progressing infection that can cause airway obstruction and death due to swelling of tissues above the vocal cords. For this reason, a presentation of severe sore throat, voice changes and dysphagia is epiglottitis until proven otherwise, and should also be suspected in someone with a severe sore throat without evidence of pharyngitis on inspection. Keep in mind that if suspected, the mouth should not be examined as instrumentation may precipitate respiratory arrest. Features suggesting airway compromise include dyspnea, tachypnea, stridor and tripoding in an attempt to enhance airflow. Previously, children were the primary people affected, with Haemophilus influenza type B the causative agent. However, due to mass vaccinations, this has almost been eradicated. Cases in adults are increasing, which may be due to smoking, diabetes and lapsing of Haemophilus immunity. The diagnosis involves direct visualisation of the airway with a laryngoscope, usually done in a controlled setting with an anaesthetist present, 
and cultures can be taken in some cases to confirm the causative organism and antibiotic susceptibility. Second line imaging involves lateral x-ray which may show an edematous and swollen epiglottis, called the thumb sign. Management generally involves securing the airway if compromised, possibly through intubation, intravenous antibiotics like keftriaxone, intravenous fluids and corticosteroids, as well as adrenaline nebulizers as required.